Yo, yo, my name is Rich Finelli, and in this eighth video in my Handlebars training series, we'll move our data from inside a JavaScript file to a JSON file. This way, we can keep our code and our data separate. We'll be learning a lot in this video. The easiest part will be moving our data from a JavaScript file to a JSON file. We'll need to use AJAX in order to perform an asynchronous HTTP request to get the data from the JSON file onto our page. Because we're making a request using AJAX, we can't do that if we serve our website over the file system. We need to use a local server in order to do that. So the logical order to do this is to first set up the local server using Gulp. Then we'll move our data from the JS file to JSON. And finally, we'll write our JavaScript to AJAX in the JSON data. For a local server, we could use something like MAMP. MAMP allows you to manage your website locally. But I've gotten into the habit of using Gulp to do this as it's very easy to get running. If you've never used Gulp before, there are some prerequisites. First, you need to have Node installed. You can go to nodejs.org and you can use the installer that they have to, to get that done. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail here about installing Gulp and Node and all that stuff. I recommend checking out this article on CSS Tricks, Gulp for Beginners by Zell Liu. It's a good article and it goes in depth on this process. Installing Gulp has two parts. One part is installing it globally, one time, that can be used for all projects. The other part is installing Gulp locally, specific to the project. I've already installed Gulp globally, but I will explain it. I'm going to open up Terminal on my Mac, and the process is, is similar if you're on a PC or you're on a Windows machine. Uh, the command that you would run to install Gulp globally is sudo npm install gulp-g. You only need the sudo part if you're using a Mac. Sudo lets you install it with admin rights. The dash g part at the end tells it to be installed globally. So you would just hit enter and you would wait for gulp to be installed globally. And that's after you install node. Now before I do install gulp at the project level or locally, I want to create a package.json file. So I want to do that in each project that I'm working on. So let's navigate to my project folder in Terminal. One of the easiest ways to do that, say CD to change directory, and then you grab that folder and just drag it into Terminal, and now it provides the path for you. And you could hit Enter, and now you're in that folder. So I'm in the 08 J, my 08 js to json folder which is you know the project folder I have for this video and now any command I run is specific to this folder so if I do npm init which is the command that creates the package.json file to be for this specific folder when you run this command it walks you through a little setup and the first thing it does is it says okay well What's the name of it going to be? And I'll, call, I'll make the name of it uh, Handlebars Training. It does give you a name that it wants to name it, which is the name of the folder that you're creating it in. But I'm going to name it a little more generically. And uh, you can't have any spaces in this name. I'm going to go with the 1.0.0 version, hit enter. Uh, I'll go with no description. As the entry point, I'm going to do gulp file.js, which I'm going to create a gulp file eventually. Uh, test command, I will not provide a test command. No git repository at the moment, no keywords, and I can, I can put my name in as the author. And I'm fine with that license. Is this, is this okay? It tells you what the package.json file will look like. And we'll see if you look over here, it'll create it as soon as I type in enter. And there it is. Now let's install Gulp for this project only. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to type in npm uh, install gulp dash dash save dash dev the dash dash save dash dev means okay we'll add this as a dependency in my package.json file and you can see it's kind of creating it's you know it's kind of outputting a lot of stuff telling you its progress and now it's done and now that it's done the one thing we can see is okay well we have a node modules folder and inside that node modules folder now there's a, a gulp folder so that means gulp was installed for this project 
And if we go into the package.json file, and I'll open it up in Sublime Text at this point, uh, we can now see this package.json file has dev dependencies line and it says gulp and the version of gulp that was installed. So we really never have to go in here for much for what we're doing. So we're going to close that. Now we've got gulp installed locally. We're ready to start using gulp. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll create and configure our gulp file. So I'll do a command N to create a new file. I'll do a command S to save it and we'll name it gulpfile.js. That's the name I, th I believe you have to name it. So we're going to save it right in the root of our project. And now let's create a variable called gulp. And let's type in require gulp as our first variable. Require gulp will tell node to look into the node modules folder for a folder named gulp. So that's what we want it to do. And we'll create a second variable and we'll call it um, connect because that's the name of the server we're going to use. And we'll say require connect. So I just created two variables that basically tell node to look into the node modules folder for gulp and for connect. Now we haven't installed connect yet, so let's go and do that. And we'll do npm install gulp dash connect dash dash save dev. The save dev because we want to make sure that it writes to our package.json file. And you can see it's trying to write to the package.json file. That's what this pink is. So now it's done. And if your console gets filled up with too much stuff, you can type in clear to not delete anything, but just to remove all the, just to kind of tidy up your console a little bit. And now again, if we looked at the node modules folder, we can see gulp connect in there. And if we looked at the package.json file, gulp connect version 5.0 is a dev dependency. So now we can uh, continue with this gulp file. Let's create the gulp task to run the gulp connect server. So the API for doing that is gulp.task. And then we can say connect. And then we can provide a callback function. And we'll say connect.server to run the server. And finally, in our gulp setup process, let's create the gulp default task to tell gulp to run the connect server whenever we type in gulp into our terminal. So we'll do gulp.task again, and this one we'll call it default, and then we'll create an array as our second argument, and we'll say connect. Because really, this would be fine. I could create one task, and I could just type in gulp space connect and it would run the connect server but a lot of times with gulp it's a task runner so you would have multiple tasks and you want all of those tasks to run so you could do connect you could do sas if you create a, a, a task to compile your css into sat or your sas into css you could have multiple items in that array which would all fire when you typed gulp into the terminal so let's see if we set up everything correct. There's a small chance we did. So now let's type in gulp. I'm still in my project folder. So you want to make sure you're still in your project folder. And you just type in gulp and it should run the default task, which will run the connect server. And we get an error. So what did we do wrong? Let's check that out real quick. Oh, yep. You, If you spotted it before I did, good for you. It should be gulp-connect is what we're requiring because we have to use the exact name from our node modules folder. I was calling it connect. It's looking for connect. It's not finding anything. So we want to make sure we say the exact name gulp-connect when we require it. Now it should work when we type in. Let's clear it out and type in gulp. It says okay starting connect finished and then server started and it gives me, it's green so it's good, so now it's running the server and now I should be able to see my website if I navigate to this URL. So I type in localhost 8080 and everything still works exactly like we left it at the end of our last training video. So Gulp is set up and working, we're running a local server. So now let's migrate our 
our JavaScript object that contains all of these Game of Thrones characters to a new JSON file. So we can close our gulp file, we can open our scripts file, and what we want to do is we want to grab this big variable cast that is our JavaScript object with all of our characters and just cut it from this area. We'll save this file and I'll create a new file and paste it in. The first thing we have to do is this is no longer JavaScript, this is JSON. So I'm going to remove the variable definition, var cast equals. So now we just have open curly braces. Now the other thing we did smart when we created our JavaScript object initially in the JavaScript file is we could have created these property names without quotes. That's valid JavaScript. But in JSON you need those quotes. You need the properties to be surrounded by quotes. So if you created your JavaScript object without the quotes and that was working fine, you want to make sure at this point you put all of your property names in quotes. So now let's save this file and we might as well save it to a new folder in our project. We'll call this folder data because that's what this is, is data. And we'll call it cast, our cast of characters. We'll save it in that data folder. So there it is. So I told you that was going to be the easy part, taking our, our JavaScript object from the JavaScript file and moving it to a separate JS file. I actually named this incorrectly. It shouldn't be cast.js. We need to make sure that's cast.json. So I'll rename it. And now we have a JSON file. So now we've got handlebars compiling our character template and trying to look for this variable called cast. Well, that variable doesn't exist anymore. That whole object, again, is in the JSON file. So now what we have to do is Ajax in that JSON file. So with jQuery, that's pretty easy to do. What we can do here is we can just say dollar sign dot Ajax, and then inside of the Ajax method, we can just point to that data folder. So data, I'm using dot slash because I want to go out of the JavaScript folder, and then I want to go into the data folder, which I already have typed in, and I want to find a file called cast.json. So that's easy enough. That gets it. So what I want to do now is when that process is done, I'm going to use the done method and we're going to pass it a callback function. We'll give that callback function an argument uh, called cast. We can name that anything you want. You can name that data. It makes sense to name it cast because we might have you know, different data floating around later. And in this case, we want to know that this is the cast object that we're getting. And now we could do a console.log and say cast. Um, and that'll just show us, okay, well, what's inside of this cast variable? Now, this statement right here at line 12, where we actually load in the compiled character template, is going to bomb out on us. So let's comment that out now. And let's just see what we get in the browser. This should all disappear. And it did. Let's see what the console says now. The console shows an object. This is our console.log. And if we look at this, we can see, okay, there's a characters array here. And it's got seven different objects. And we can see, okay, we have our data. This is good. This is what handlebars needs, is this, this object. This is good stuff. So now that we know that, okay, this cast contains the data in this file. Now what we can do is we can grab this here and we can replace that console.log with this. And since this cast equals the same cast variable we were using earlier, this should work. I have to put this inside of the Ajax done function at this point because right now this, is, this variable is only located inside of here. So let's refresh it and boom. We really get exactly what we saw before, but instead of the data coming from our JavaScript file, now it's coming from an outside JSON file.